hello everyone <laughs> yeah it's good to be back here and uh, i know it's been a while i haven't really been i haven't done anything on youtube i think almost six seven or eight months now so and then like i explained in the last video um i'm just relocated i'm still trying to settle in and i had to move again so <laughs> it's been a bit tough on me but anyways um i am back and um, i've got some good content for um the youtube community and also my subscribers i duly um, apologize i saw some comments about um uh, extens and i'm addressing those as well um, i just want to make you guys happy and be sure that you love the content you get from me okay um enough with the um talking let's get right into business as usual um so what do we have here um i'm going to be starting a uh, series of um, recordings i think might be up to six seven or eight or probably ten who knows uh, i want to um deploy wazoo um, which is actually a uh, host based nutrition protection but in the context of um, taking it over to the cloud so we'll be deploying wazoo eks um on um aws environment um using the basic uh, infrastructure on terraform then also kubernetes for the application deployment uh, what we're going to be doing is um, I can um, share. The goal is to get Wazoo deployed. Then um, we will have a bunch of integrations within the cloud native environment, GuardUty, CloudTrail, um, GuardUty, uh, CloudTrail, yeah. Uh, maybe inspect, uh, maybe other forms of logs. We might in have a Kinesis integration to pass it as over to Kinesis then taking all that and shipping it over to an S3 bucket where we can fetch it into Wazoo um, so we can have that complete visibility. We'll also be having an integration for Jira. We'll also be having an integration for um, um, Opsgini on call or page or DT and also Slack notification. Now that will seem more like what you have having um, a scheme. We're not trying to build a Sentinel here, but we're trying to build something that has got capability um, to do what your classic Sentinel or maybe curator would do. Because we're also going to have Aristotle integration um, where we can actually do active threat detection and also uh, threat prevention using Wazoo and Aristotle integration. Well, I hope you enjoy this content. It's going to be um, maybe a number of videos, but um, I promise to keep it short, precise, and also hit the target. Now, um, for today, what we're going to do is, um, I have my EKS cluster here. Um, I'm just going to share the basic architectural um, diagram. I, if you can see this, uh, we have that AWS within the VPC. So we're going to have three availability zones, one to three, with the public subnets, then the private subnets. Basically, we'll deploy the cluster in the private subnets, but we should be able to access it via Bastion host at the public. So we'll either be using a load balancer, um, um, URL since we did not register a domain for this, but I'll recommend you register a domain if you want to do that. Uh, so you can have the domain registered with a certificate, then you can access it via that domain. But in our case, we'll just deploy the cluster on the private subnets, then we'll make it available to the public so we can actually access it over the public. Then we will start onboarding maybe uh, um, agents. Uh, sorry, after the cluster deployments, we will go ahead and um, get was deployed. You can see I've got a bunch of um um stops going on here so um the first one which we're going to use will be this basic wazoo deployment which i cloned from the wazoo um github repository then um we want to mature this to a point where we have this so if you look at this you would see i've done some uh, um way 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 um advanced into this whole stuff i've got um api integration i've got Jira integration then if i go into um just give me a second the managers you would see i've got a bunch more under integrations i've got some stuff for no alert check automation checking for that slack of genie then also the reporting you see we've got cloudflare cloud regality and um, also a bunch of accounts which i've actually hooked up to monitor for activities within the cloud now um, we're also going to be adding an agent outside the cloud so we can see that we can have complete monitoring and observability on that agent although it's not in the cloud uh, which we'll be deploying this wise with cm into okay um enough with my ranting for day one let's get the infrastructure deployed so i'm going to show you what a basic infrastructure looks like so in my infrastructure deployment file here you would see i've got um, in the main.tf let's quickly run through a few things before we actually run the terraform workflow to get this thing pushed in so i'm actually 
doing this on a specific region i'll be using um london uh which i think it's eu um that should be eu west too i think <laughs> okay so um first and first if you are starting from scratch i would recommend you um have an account i do have an account and i've already created a user because i don't want to use my user root user so i created this user was aks which is the user will be using to actually deploy and manage the infrastructure on the cloud so i would recommend you do the same within that user you should also create security keys or uh, credentials and which you would be needing to actually use to manage in my case i've granted a bunch of permissions here but you don't have to do that because i use this user for other stuff anyways and you can just give it an admin credential or maybe the necessary credentials that are required for an eks cluster to work that should be just the bare minimum but i would simply advise you adopt the least privilege mentality so whatever you're doing is not over excessive permissions for this one account um, um if you've got uh what i intend to do with time is to segregate the roles so have multiple accounts then give these permissions based on a role that they need to uh, a job function or a role that they need to be used for but in my case for basic recording i just have this also you should create a security credential which should be like your assets and secret asset key which will be used to connect uh, to the cloud environment for the deployment. So that's the first stage. Once you have that done, going into the deployment, what we're basically doing is we're actually having it all in one box, one in all one made of tier file. I'm not doing this data plane separation from the infra. I'm just putting everything in a box because it's a simply simple uh, ETS cluster deployment. Well, I've got some complex ones. If you want them, pretty much let me know. I can gladly share with you on my GitHub repository. Okay, so um, we've got um, the data uh, for the availability zone. We set that up. Um, opt-in not required, pretty much not enforcing that. Then on the locals, the cluster name uh, will be generating a random string to complete that, but it should have YZKS at the start of the name. Then also we send the resource for the random string length. We are limiting it to eight, okay? Then for the VPC, we're actually leveraging off the AWS Terraform module. We're not trying to create anything in scratch. We're just pulling it from that source, then getting it created. Now we give it a name was a VPC, which you should do basically. Then we give it um, the CIDR. In my case, it's using 10 slash 16. This is something I would leave to your um, preference. Again, if you've got specific VPCs within your infrastructure environment, if it's for a company, you want to stick to those so you don't have anything outside that you cannot monitor or observe. Then also for the availability zones, you see I'm actually using a slice from the availability zones to actually pass it on into between zero and three. Now for the private subnets, I have specified them. Then for the public subnet, I have also specified them. Okay, you can do the same. Now for um, a NAT gateway, we are enabling it. We're using a single NAT. Then also the DNS host name, so we can actually use the load balancer uh, um, 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 load balancer ID to actually access the resource in cloud. Now for the public subnets, we are also leveraging up um, Kubernetes um, IO cluster. Then in the local cluster name, we're actually passing that as shared. Then we are setting the ELB as one, the private subnet for that as well. Going into the EKS itself, the module we're using actually from a Terraform AWS. We're not trying to do anything from scratch again. We're specifying the version. We put in the cluster name from the name we defined above. Then we're setting the version. Now, um, there's a way we could do this to look for the most recent version, but in our case, we're setting a specific version 1.28, which I think is the most recent. Uh, I think 1.27 will be losing support from early next year. So 1.28 actually still got at least a number of supports. Uh, then uh, for the VPC, we are as well fetching from the modules which you define in the start, the subnet as well. Then the cluster endpoint access we set as true. And I think um, for the availability, uh, we're now using um, a node group. Now I'm specifying D3 large. Uh, in your case, um, you could go way higher or you could go lesser, but I have had experience deploying with them T3 medium, X large, so T3 medium or T3 large. And um, I maxed out CPUs, I maxed out memories, and I couldn't have other pods spawn, which was really messy. So um, I I think so far from my use case with Wazoo, pretty little large just seems good. But also that depends on the number of um, desired and also the minimum maximum you're certain. In my case, minimum is one, desired is maximum is three, then desired is two. I had set that hard limits. 
Now, if I know this infrastructure will scale and I would have multiple uh, agents hooked up to my Wazoo, I might want to um, extend this hard limit. Okay, then for the second node group, I'm doing exactly the same thing as the first node group. Then for the data uh, plane, I'm pulling the IAM policy for the BS CSI policies, then also the IRSA EBS CSI policy as well. Then also for the BS CSI policy for the um, AWS add-on. Maybe distracted will work. All right, so this is what you have pretty much straight up. For the output, I'll be outputting a bunch of um, stuff which I would need to further. So like um, maybe the cluster endpoint, the cluster security group, the region and the cluster name. So I can actually export that into my um, kubectl context on my local machine. Then for the .tf, I'm just specifying uh, where I've got the definition from Terraform, then also the sources and other stuff which we'll be pulling from. Then on the variable, um, I'm only hard coding the EU West 2 for the region here as default. Okay, that's all we have within this context. Now we're going to deploy this. I will start the deployment, but I won't keep you hanging or staying on the recording because it takes uh, on AWS, it's, it's a bit crappy. It's a bit faster on uh, GCP and um, Azure, but on AWS, usually it takes at least 10 or 20 minutes, depends on your network connectivity speed. And also uh, one or two other factors, which I'm not sure of, maybe the, the region you're using. In my case, I'm in Lisbon, so I think London should be okay. All right, I've got stops in uh, um, EU West one, which actually I don't want to put this in, which might a bit closer to me. So let's uh, get into that uh, folder. And uh, if I do a long list there, we'll see we've got everything in here. So I'm just going to do a Terraform in it. Again, uh, get the starts. Now um, I'm also working towards like this run of SH where I can just run this stuff. It's going to do everything for me, but um, I've got a bunch of other things which I'm adding here, which obviously I don't want to show, I get that script running in this actual point. So this will initialize um, fetching all the necessary required into that. I can also do like a Terraform uh, validates just to be sure that um, it all looks good within the context of what we have in a Terraform deployment file. You can see the configuration is valid. That looks good. Now the next thing we're going to do is like a Terraform plan and we would save a state. Now you don't have to save a state, but I love to do that so I can actually keep track um, subsequent changes that I'm making. So I'll do a Terraform. Uh, plan then I'll pass this out to a file which I'm going to call states uh, plan that should be good uh, states.tf my bad okay that should be good now we're going to save that states um, um, out so we can actually reference it you would see um, so far we have all the changes which is about 63 to be added 00, zero to be changed and destroyed because there's nothing pretty much in that region Okay, um, um, for those who might be a bit confused, uh, maybe starting from scratch, uh, once you create that account on the cloud environment, you extract the keys, you want to use the AWS configure to add them uh, um, to your context here so you can actually work with them. Anyways, I'm sharing this because I'm going to pretty much destroy this once I'm done with the recording. All right, so um, now that we have this looking good, we can go ahead and Terraform apply on this so we can start the application. So Terraform apply. Uh, I don't know why I didn't set my context to just tap this thing or maybe use a short key to actually get this thing done. Okay, so we'll apply this change. Then we'll go to the state since we have it in the states. Uh, TF plan. So this is going to start the application of our um, states. Now, um, this will take a while, definitely. Um, so I'll pause this video here. Once um, it's done deploying, I will come back to you guys. Now, just to mention, um, if you're using, I will push this into GitHub and share the repo. If you're using this, I've actually tested this, cleaned it over and over. You won't run into errors, no matter the version of Terraform you're working with. But if you are just pulling something out in the public and trying to work with that, you might run into a bunch of errors with Terraform and that can be frustrating. So um, it's up to you. Uh, I could help, um, but it's up to you to decide what you want to work with. Either this, I have another one, which is a bit more robust for a robust infrastructure, infrastructure uh, or you want to just fetch something on your own and work with. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video. Once this deployment is done, I will return and continue the recording. All right.
Okay, um, so our uh, deployment is done. As you can see, um, apply complete 63 created zero change or destroy. And um, we have the endpoint. I'm just going to copy this and update this with what I have here. I just love to keep that in case I need to manage the cluster. Now, um, next thing we're going to do is actually extract the credential as a credential and export it to our um, code control context so we can easily manage that from our terminal here so i'm actually extracting um the terraform output for the region i'm also updating um the output for the cluster names i'm actually exporting that over to my Koto context now once that is done i can now run command like commands like uh Koto, um get nodes get um cluster info uh, i'll just put a So we will see the cluster info. We can also run kubectl and get nodes. Uh, we will see the three nodes we have. Also, if I go back to my browser and um, I'm going to refresh this page, you will see the instances that have been created the three nodes. Then also um, on the, the um, cluster, if I refresh this, you will see a cluster. We can open that up. And um, you'll see if I don't have the right, you might run into problems um, saying you don't have access to access this. Again, if you use your roots and then um, you have a user which you're using to actually deploy the cluster, you might have that issue of access uh, based on the DAC for the um, Kubernetes. But um, on my case, you can see I've got access to see the resources. I can see all of them that were deployed. Uh, um, I can see the ports. I can see if there are replica sets, I can actually see them. Under the cluster, I can also see the names. I can see the name the nodes, the name spaces, and also any API services that I have running. You can see that for the auto scaling as well. Um, that shows that our deployment ran successfully. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop this first video. The fact that we've got the cluster deployed and uh, we have our running cluster. We've also exported the context over to our Kubecuttle file so we can actually manage the cluster from here. The next recording, what we'll be doing is we'll be deploying WASM on that cluster and we're just going to use the direct clone from the wireless website uh, which is what i've cloned here to deploy this uh, deploy a quick wise over to um the kubernetes and we're going to manage was you see uh pods because we're going to have a master we're going to have an indexes we have worker nodes then we would the dashboard as well we'll manage our um, deployment see what it looks like probably make one or two few changes by logging into the master, verifying that we've got the right services running. Then we will also access the service from the dashboard and see what it looks like. Now, once we're done with that, we'll now go into the advanced level of adding the integrations. Remember I did mention, we're gonna be adding a bunch of integrations to um, enrich uh, the our Wazoo infrastructure. That might take a bit of steps and might take a while to get that done completely, but stick around with me and you're gonna enjoy that. Uh, whole process but i'm going to show you if you're going to have issues i'm glad to explain every bit of issues that you might encounter in the entire process thank you for your time and um, see you in the next recording have a great day okay bye